Hey guys, it's Miss Smith. I'm coming to you from Simon Kenton High School. And as you can see here, the only thing missing is you all. Um, but I've arranged the time to come in here with our administrators and do a little quick lesson for you guys. It's on my favorite, the defense mechanisms. This is a wide try curriculum um, by Christian Moore. He created the program. So I just want to go over with you guys in the first step in identifying and controlling your defense mechanisms is first that you've got to recognize those defense mechanisms and those pressure situations in yourself. So I would also like to point out that our learning target before we get started into the poster and the curriculum is that our learning target comes from the what is a social and emotional learning. So it's I can identify common social and emotional concerns when I feel angry, I've got anxiety, I feel depressed, I, maybe you've suffered grief, and describe the self-management and the coping skills and strategies such as goal setting, refusal skills, decision making, time management um, for addressing these areas of concern. So if we just read what's in bold, I can identify uh, common social and emotional concerns and describe self-management and coping strategies for addressing these areas of concern as needed. And that's what this class is all about. It's about you learning the coping skills that you need for when you're in, in situations or you've experienced situations. Maybe you've gone through trauma. Maybe you've had situations happen in your life that have caught you by surprise. And in that brief moment, you've, you've reacted in a negative way. So what this class is doing and what I would like to work with you guys on, and this is why I've picked this poster, is because this is a lot of times stuff that even as adults that we struggle with. Um, I know I've been teaching the Y Try curriculum going on eight years now. And I can honestly say that I have grown so much just from teaching it to you guys. Um, so what is a defense mechanism? A defense mechanism comes about from when we have um, experienced something, maybe it's trauma, maybe it's losing somebody, maybe it's um, whatever that situation may be, but it's how we have learned to cope with that situation. And a lot of times it's whether you've been hurt by somebody or you've lost a loved one or you're suffering depression, you may, you may isolate yourself. Or if you get disrespected, maybe you've been hurt by somebody so bad and they've disrespected you in such a horrible way that if somebody just, whether it's a teacher or it's a, your boyfriend or girlfriend, and you're in that situation and you feel like they've disrespected you, then your response is overboard. It's like, whoa, that person's looking at you and thinking, whoa, what just happened here? So, and I've had that. I've been that person where I've been triggered. And I'll give you an example. Prior to my daughter was maybe, this was eight years ago. I was not aware of my triggers. I was not aware of some of the things that was going on in my life and I would be in the vehicle driving. My daughter was out of her boosters, out of her baby seat and into a booster seat and she'd be sitting and I'd be driving and she was in the back seat and when that harness would go over her shoulder, but it wouldn't go across, then I would, I would redirect her. And I found that once my son came along and he was more moving and more out of control and a little bit more jumpy and movie and all this other stuff that I would find that I would experience anger in the car as I'm driving. And so what happened was is that I was in a really bad car accident in 1993 where I flipped my car and I should have died. I should have died. And the, normally I always had somebody in the front seat with me, this little girl that I babysat all the time. And so Back in those days, you didn't have to have kids in the back seat. They could ride with you in the front seat because we didn't have airbags. So, you know, if I had had her in the front seat, then she, she would have died. 
So when I'm driving my children in the car and they're not following the safety procedures that I feel and I have been trained to know what is the safety procedures, then I have found that I will ask, please set, make sure your um, seat belts over your shoulder and going down the middle, you know, make sure you're sitting still. Don't lean forward, don't scoot down, don't set this. Just sit there like a little robot. Like that's what I was expecting of a four year old and a eight year old. So mind you, I would tell them three times. I always felt like three times was the golden rule. And then after that third time, this emotion rose up within me that was un uncontrollable. So during that time, I would feel that uncontrollable response and that's when I would respond inappropriately and I would make a negative choice. I would make a negative choice. So I would respond out of control. I would lash at my, out at my children when they're like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, mom was calm. Now all of a sudden she's screaming at us and pulling over on the side of the road and saying, you know, what's going on here? Okay? So that that is how you know that that's a pressure situation. And I was not in control of my defense mechanisms and how I responded. So what, what I have learned by teaching this program for the last eight years is not only has this program, if you really practice it, and granted, I've practiced it for eight years. I have taken it serious, and I have practiced it in my own life. And yeah, I still have triggers. I still have things that I deal with, but I'm more able to recognize that situation when I'm feeling like, oh my goodness, that person just got in my face and they just yelled at me, but I can step back and I can, I can be aware of what it is that I want to say or not say and be able to control the way that I respond and that is the key and that is the reason that I love the defense mechanisms poster is that you know it is teaching you how to respond and stay in control and by doing that that gives me more self-respect which will give you guys more self-respect so the biggest thing is is that when you come across the situation, so we've, we've talked about the, the definition of defense mechanism, and that's also one of the terms that I'm gonna have you guys look up on your own, is um, the defense mechanisms. But when the first key, and the um, to me it's the most important key, and you can't do steps two, three, and four if you don't have this one mastered. And that doesn't mean that because we're all human and we all make mistakes, but that doesn't mean that, you know what, um, I go off on my kids because they're, they're safe. And when I say going off on them, it's what you said, right? You know, it's, it's raising my voice. It's that it, it's hitting that trigger of because I'm afraid I'm going to be in a car accident and they might die but my kids are eight and they're four and they don't understand my reaction. They think that it's overboard. They don't understand. All they know is that mommy's pulled over on the side of the road and she's got tears in her eyes and she's looking at them and saying, please set right, you know, stop. But that, that is the pressure situation. So how I have to handle that is when I am driving and I'm in that situation of when I start to feel that anger, when I start to feel that uncontrollable response coming up in me, that's the key. What does that look like in my body? How does that come across? Do I start to sweat? Do I start to feel heat? You know, and that's recognizing what it looks like in your body so that you know when those feelings start coming up, how to respond. So that's the outward behaviors that will help to help you to control it. So that, in a nutshell, is recognizing your defense mechanisms so that you can control it. If I'm in any of these situations, a lot of times you get caught 
mom catches you, a teacher catches you cheating on a test, it's how do you respond? Are you going to own it? Are you going to take responsibility for it? It's how do you respond in those quick minute decisions that is life changing. And these defense mechanisms, not only does it connect and it goes with our common core standards, I use the Kentucky standards, the health standards number four to, to connect to this lesson because that's talking about using interpersonal communication skills to enhance your health so that you can avoid and reduce your health risk. So when you're in control of how you respond, it lowers, it lowers your stress level. It helps you to stay calm, which helps you to not increase your blood pressure, to not increase your anxiety levels. It helps you, your heart rate, you know, all those different things. So that in turn, the defense mechanisms helps you to reduce those, those health risks. So the second step, once you start identifying, and that doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. That doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. So you're going to look at identifying the situation where you can practice this. For me, that was in the car. That was in the car when I would be driving that I can look at, okay, I'm starting to feel upset. Okay, just take a deep breath. Pay attention to the road. And just talk to them when you get home. Make sure, number one, that they are being safe and just redirect them. And then two, three, is don't let other people control how you respond. This is a huge one that I hear from a lot of students is, well, that teacher disrespected me, so I'm going to disrespect her back. Well, that, 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 it's also like in customer service. Uh, the customer's always right. So it's how do you get your point across without losing self-respect. So, and also remember that you're letting somebody else control how you respond when you dis if they disrespect you, you disrespect them back. Always take the high road. You always be in control of your emotions and stop and think before you speak or act. Make sure that your words come out appropriately and that it's not going to be something that you, you'll regret or that you'll end up in trouble getting a referral. So you know that someone is trying to control you if they are yelling at you physically attacking you or putting you down. One, those are not friends. So you don't want to hang around people that are treating you that way. You want to make sure that you're, you have self-respect and you don't let somebody treat you bad. And number four, select a positive solution. What would motivate you to do the tougher and harder thing? What might happen if you stay in control? So we're going to look at once we, um, I want you guys to go ahead, take a moment. I'm going to give you a minute to write down these, um, what may take you a little bit more than a minute. But if you can, on the video, you can go back to it, pause it, and get the words wrote down. So I want you to write down these, and as we're transitioning to our next classroom, um, I'm going to be moving to, the, to home and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of where my favorite classroom is. And so um, if you guys can go ahead, write down these words. I want you to look up the definitions and the transition time before I catch back up to you. Okay. But also I just want to thank you all for joining me on this. And remember that the Why Try curriculum, this comes from Christian Moore. I know that right now Christian Moore is offering the resilience program to free due to the NTI and for parents so you're more than welcome if you want to share that with your parents so that they can look at that and kind of get more tools that they have to for during this time so um, but thanks for joining me and I will see you in a few minutes and please remember to copy down the words and get the definitions. Thank you.